gorgeous day again for a ride. Last time I took a ride, the leaves were just barely coming out. A lot of brown still. Today, you can see. We've gotten so much rain the last week or two. The leaves have exploded. Well, I also know this because my oldest son and my husband have horrible allergies, especially with poplar trees. Oh, but it is a stunning, gorgeous day out. Come ride with me. The last time I was out here, just for reference, it was so windy, there's no way I could have recorded and you would have heard what I said. It was so, so windy that I was riding in the easiest gear that I could pedal at because I was riding right into the wind, like 20 mile an hour sustained winds gusts to 30. It was a tough ride. Other than this river being a pretty swift moving river, I feel like it would be a great swimming river. Woodpecker back there in the woods. But it's such a beautiful spot, isn't it? And it's just so quiet here. And the river goes across on the other side too. Yeah, I love it here. One thing I will say is when I stopped at that little spot back there with the river, um, the bugs started swarming me. When I'm riding my bike, the, I don't even notice the bugs. Now, later on tonight at dusk, I will notice the bugs because the noceums and gnats that I uploaded a short about the other day will swarm. And of course, anywhere near water. Hence, me stopping at that little river and that bridge, they started to swarm. Talking about, I'm trying to avoid all this crap. Almost hit that one poor condition of roads here but it is a rural road so that explains that and here's some more nice potholes for me to avoid by riding closer to the center of the road and hopefully no traffic's coming <laughs> i know roughly where i'm at but i've never been on this road and i i'm pretty sure i know where it goes but i'm not a hundred percent sure i looked at the map before i left my house so I have an idea. Um, it's just, I've been known to screw up looking at maps too. Oh, is that pavement again? What the heck? And look at the lilacs. Oh, they smell amazing. Oh, the highways, the road's a little rough there. It's dirt and it's rained recently. And so it's kind of screwy along the edge there. And I almost, it just now okay so it's not pavement it's still all gravel it was a 
optical delusion, as I call it. What a gorgeous sky today, man. You know, it's a good thing I have my bear spray with me, honestly, because this is the kind of growth, tight, close trees and brush and swamp that bears just love and coyotes and other kinds of wildlife. And good Lord, I hope that I'm not getting further into the thick of things and I'm actually just on this shortcut road I thought I'd take to get where I'm adventuring to today, which is a lake near where I live. That is a good sign right there. Because according to my memory, this road takes a sharp turn to the right and takes me right back to the main road that I was on. So it's just like a shortcut. And what's so interesting for me to think about is the fact that up until two years ago, I never had any sort of weapon or defense against animals, wildlife or anything on my hikes or bike rides. It was when I started taking, oh my gosh, hold on. Lord of mercy, I needed a little mustard and holy Sandy, my gosh. Talk about feeling like you're driving on the beach. <sighs> anyway, up until a couple years ago, I hadn't taken a lot of super rural walks um, or bike rides. But then when I started to, oh, traffic. Look at that dust cloud. Oh, yuck. I took a deep breath before he went past and tried to exhale very slowly. But as you know, I just went up that hill. So I'm pretty, breathing pretty hard. Anyway, a couple years ago, I started taking more rural rides. Now that I have my e-bike, I go a lot farther distances. And so, um, I thought it was a smart idea to get some bear spray. Hence, now I carry bear spray with me wherever I go on my rides and my walks. And holy cow, there is a lot of sand out here. I am riding through, well, right now it's packed, but it was like riding on the beach back there a minute ago. Craziness, loose, loose sand. My goodness, some beautiful trees out here. Well, I got back out to the road and I found out when I stopped the last time and looked at the map that I, the road and the shortcut that I thought I had taken was not the one I took. I took a much longer one. So at this point in time, I'm at least heading back. I still have, whoa, bump, four bars on my battery out of five. It turns out with not too windy of a day and with very few hills, I can get about 13, 14 miles per bar on my battery. So hopefully that rings true today. And I roll in my driveway with about three bars of battery left. Um, Cause you're not supposed to wear your battery down completely. It's hard on the battery. So if you're interested in buying an e-bike, that's my two cents regarding that. <laughs> the other comments I wanted to say is look at this trail. It's crushed limestone slash gravel. It is not in very good shape. And oh, lots of trees. 
tree branches and rocks and boulders and potholes and it's just the the area where I live they call this a bike trail but it's not it, it, it's barely a bike trail it's essentially a shoulder to the road that's not paved that's all it is it's not really a bike path but they market it as a bike path and that's pretty embarrassing because that ain't true it is not a bike path people who ride, ride regular road bikes would not enjoy this quote unquote bike path it even feels like beach sand in some areas again where i'm riding loose loose sand not packed um so i think it's wrong that they market it as a bike trail oh look all here we have pavement again but for the last couple of miles it's been all gravel so I don't know if they can really call it a bike path I've got some comments about that and also um, I made it to the lake so to speak but I'm not at the lake at all I thought the spike path went down to the lake. And what I'm seeing along the spike path is a lot of residents. Like, you can see the lake in the distance, sort of, but it's, it's very residential. You can't very well go walking through people's private yards to get to the lake, so. But then again, I've not ridden this path before. Maybe I will be able to get down to the lake at some point in time before I turn off this road to head back home. We'll see. Okay, guys, this is hilarious. I'm like 100 yards from the original shortcut that I thought I was taking. So I'm almost to the point where I'm turning to head home. And the original shortcut that I thought I was on, that I wasn't. So apparently I'm not going to get a chance to go down to the lake. Which stinks. Oh, wait, there's a road here. Oh... Hold everything. Heidi Ho. I just was gonna turn right to head back home and I discovered this little road. This is not private. Well, 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 I guess I'm gonna get a chance to get to the lake. Awesome. These two cute baby raccoons. I wondered what was in the road because I could see some movement in the road. I thought it was squirrels or something or birds, which is what they usually are. Then as I got closer, I realized it's two baby raccoons. That was pretty cool. I'm almost back to where um, the road is paved again. That corner right up there, as far as you can see, um, is where I have to turn off. So thanks for coming along on this beautiful little adventure today.